All right. We're All recording. Right, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Sub Podcast, episode 111. Yeah. 111. I'm your host, Luke Trevisi. Uh, with me, as always, uh, the great Lawrence Deloach. Yo. And definitely not a fuck up, Chris Cheney. <laughs> What's up, guys? Definitely not a Chris. Yeah, definitely not a fuck up, Chris Cheney. That's my guy. Uh, <laughs> no, of course we got our co. Uh, we also have a special guest with us today, a good friend of mine. Uh, one of my best. Like we go back, man. This is. I, I just only introduce him as uh, Eric Juice Foster. Everybody, he's Juice. Everybody. Good job. What's going on, Juice? Here? Thanks for being here, man. What's going on? All right. Should we? Should we let him know what's going on? <laughs> yeah, we can let him know. It's fine. Hey, All right. Hey. We fucked up. We fucked up. <laughs> I, well, I fucked up. We were recording for like 20 minutes, and I realized the Zoom wasn't recording. We're a team right You're now. As a unit, we fucked we, up. We came together as a team. We put out some fire content for you guys that just never – you'll never see. Never but that's seen. okay. That's in our memories. Okay. We're fucking – it's all in our memories. Now we're just homies. We're, <laughs> now we're all just hanging out. We were in Juice's bathroom for a second. and Chick got wild. Yeah. Ooh, y'all he missed should... the soap. Y'all fucked up. Y'all fucked up. He <laughs> fucked up. He showed us the soap. He's not going to show us the soap again. <laughs> I'm using Dr. Bronner's. Fuck that. I'm not even <laughs> special soap. <laughs> uh, let's talk about, uh, first of all, thanks, guys, for covering me for me last week. You know? Of course, buddy. Love yeah, these no guys. Problem. Just got to make sure to cover our bases. Make sure that fans know. I, I thanked them earlier, but I just want to let you guys know that I thank them now. <laughs> you gotta see it for yourselves. You just gotta, we go, you know. Should we try to go back over the doc real quick? We started off with the doc. Yeah, let's talk about the doc. Let's we go back over again. it. Yeah. Um. Well, actually, we really started with the fire fives. Right. And that led us in. Um. We overslept. Me and Juice overslept on them. Yeah. Wasn't really for me, but we talked about the importance of the Nike Air. Juice, maybe can you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. You want to just go back to that that uh that Nike comment that you had about the shoes? Which ones? To talk oh, about having the on air? the back, yeah. Oh, like if the like if the Nike Air is not on it, it, it changes the entire like uh the the weight of the shoe as far as like like the first six they've come out with the Jumpman on it before and like that was cool because it was still a colorway that Mike wore. Like yeah. if Mike wore it, people trip. That, mm-hmm. That's my whole thing. I don't like buy like off colors. Like if Mike didn't wear it, I'm like ah. Eh. Like I won the Travis Scotts, the high top ones. So like. Yeah. That's that's and that's my first pair of ones. Like I, I won those on sneakers app. So like, that's a one off. But everything else, like I, I try to keep it true to true to what Mike wore. So like, when Nike Air gets put on it, the price, the, the value just. So then you know, uh, leeches resellers want to like try and get on it and and take away as many as they can from the public and shit mm-hmm. and resell it for like, two like three sixty and shit like dickheads. But. Um, yeah, I just think the, the, the value of Jordans go up depending on like colorway and branding. And like you put that, that Nike ear on it, it's a wrap. That shit's flying. Well, you know, we, we look at, you look at certain models of, uh, like a, a Jordan one, uh, a Jordan three, a four, and you have, say for example, you have, uh, the black and cement fours that, you know, they came out in 2012 and they had the Jordan, uh, the jump man on the back. And then, you know, uh, last year we get the Nike Air version and how people, like, they they want to dump the uh, Jordan uh, logo uh, pairs. Uh, yeah. that's, ones were a big thing. You know, if you had the Nike Air on the uh, on the tongue, everyone was like, oh, shit, these are the, the limited. You got to get them, you know. And, and you, mm-hmm. had, you had ones with the Jumpman logo and people, you know, they, they trashed them. There was Chicago's with the Jumpman logo and everyone was like, those are trash. <laughs> and then a couple of years later, they fucking come out with, you know, Jordan, uh, a Nike Air on the, on the, on Chicago ones in, in 2015 and boom, everyone's going crazy for them. So. When did uh, mids get popular? Say that again? When did mids get popular? I have no idea. Oh, yeah. Well, we also got the mids coming out. We had a pair of mids coming out this week, right? Oh, no, they came out. When did they come out? The Luka Doncic ones? Oh, the Luka, yeah, I know. Why did Luka uh, get highs? The nigga's nice. Give that's the high. other thing I'm trying to figure out, too, man. I don't know why they, he didn't get highs. You know, my whole thing is this. All right, I'm 29. I was born in 1990. When I was in high school, and most of us niggas who was in high school, especially growing up in New York, mids was never lit. Only people mm-hmm. wearing lids was mids was the little, was the, the Mexican kids. <laughs> and like the one-off niggas in 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 the school, mids were never lit. 
the only mid that was ever lit, or I think that was a low, was the 14s, that the the blue ones, the blue, black, blue, black, and yellows. Yeah. But outside of that, niggas wasn't rocking lows. Um, I will say this. I did have a pair of low twos, the white and blue ones, but like I feel like another one off. But I just feel like in ones, now all of a sudden everybody needs a pair of mids. They got mad mids coming out. Nike put so much backing to people making their own like like fake like certain uh uh creatives or whatever the fuck and influencers um making their own ones. And I was like, they're all mids. What like what are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all want? Why I want this? I don't like yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Yeah, the culture's changing OD, bro, and it's blowing minds. Well, I was gonna that that is something we could we could discuss how you know certain models or certain you know they they have like a resurgence or they and I'm, I'm not gonna say mids are having a resurgence, but they're definitely coming more to the forefront where people are you know they're not scoffing at them like oh man I'm not fucking with mids I'm gonna wear a pair of Jordan one mids. Uh, we, we're seeing a resurgence with dunks. Like, you know, we, we saw that now where I feel like uh, Nike is going to, they're going to whore out mids. I mean, dunks like they did Jordan 1s. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know? Travis Scott for that. Mm-hmm. We get the, I mean, we can all, I mean, Travis is obviously, you know, we, we talked about the Travis effect on this podcast, but yes, he is one of those guys that, He's wearing a lot of SBs, and it is bringing, you know, making people uh, aware of older SBs that maybe didn't get the credit they deserve. But it's just rappers in general, and it feels like the, the youth are, like, driving up, you know, they're trying to get any pair of SBs that, that are coming out. Uh, how, how long do you guys think this uh, is dunk uh, fad? Or not fad, but how long do you think this, this dunk being, like, on top can last? Well, before we go on to the dunks thing, I did want to make a point about mids. I think that's also Nike fabricating. Uh, like, they're trying to push mids more than anything else right now. Uh, and Juice, Juice, you can attest to this because you've seen it in your store. Every, like every, st- every time you go to a Nike store, you can find mids, you know? So, like, if they're in, like, they're available to the public, there's, like, everybody's, like, I'm not going to be able to get shattered backboards. But the shitty orange, the, the orange mids, I could get those, you know? Uh, so it's like a first option for, like, people who are, just don't have it, well, you know? And then eventually that's like, oh, all right, well, people are buying this. The common man is buying this. So now it just extrapolates, and now we're getting, now we're getting fucking custom mids. Bring back metallic ones. Mm-hmm. Well, I, think, I think Nike is always, they've, they've played on that very well in terms of, oh, you can't get the, the super limited ones. We're gonna throw out some, you know, some less than you know hyped yeah. sneakers, and you're gonna purchase them. I mean, perfect example. I yeah. mean, you know, the the Dior <laughs> ones. You know, as soon as the Dior ones came out, you know, everyone was like, well, I can't afford two thousand. I'm not buying. It. But then they released a pair of you know Zoom Air ones. Yeah, bro, I got them. Give me one second. That's yeah, go, yeah, go grab them. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, and to go back to what you were saying, Lawrence, about the dunks, it's like. Uh, I don't, the, the cycles of shoes getting popular is getting tighter. Um, and I, I think it really just depends on what people like Travis want to do next. Like when, I think when they run out of cool options with these shoes that are popular now and they go on to the next one, but it really depends because I, the cycles just keep changing. Look, I, I feel like these came out come, of nowhere, right? What happened? How come for you are they? Uh, they're all right. They're not great. You know? I haven't really walked around in them yet. I've just had them sitting in a box because uh, I've been wearing my house shoes around. Because mm. I got the I got these and the Yeezys at the same time, so I was just like, "Well, what am I gonna wear in the house? Jordan ones or house shoes?" You know. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I've just been wearing the Yeezys a lot. And what was your last point that you was trying to make? Yeah. Oh, well, oh no, it's it's just like the the cycles of shoes that get popularized. It's it's less about like. It's less about the actual trends as far as the what the world is following, because like dad shoes um, and like that whole norm core, like th- these are periods of times that like these Nike shoes po- got popular in and out of. Mm-hmm. So it's really hard to see. Like Lawrence, going back to you know your answer to the original question, and this was kind of long winded, but like it's just so hard to see because it's based more on like celebrity influence than it is like fashion influence to me. Well, I'm not going to sit here and, I mean, yeah, granted, you know, there are certain rappers and, and that made certain shoes popular, but I'm not going to sit here and say that whatever Travis decides to wear next is 
as well. Because people, I mean, people are going to like what they like. Yeah. Granted, maybe some of the younger generation is more influenced and causing, you know, uh, certain, like, if, if they see, like, their favorite rapper, then they're going to attempt to get the sneakers by any means, in turn, whether it's, you know, bots or whatever, which then causes the people who, you know, older people who may actually like them to be, you know, shut out. It's a, it is a, it's a domino effect to me, uh, but it does make it does bring up a really good point that it's like all right we've seen the Jordan uh, one wave we've seen Air Max wave we've yeah. seen phone posits like you know we saw where you know they were selling out and, and being resold for four or five times what you pay for them we're at a, a dunk phase now uh, you know and I I think Chris you talked about it earlier I think like you know what's next Air Force Ones or you know, what can you guys see being the next I mean, Air Force trend? Ones have been the trend now. So Air Force Ones have hit this really gross trend, especially, like, with, like, overseas white people where it's, like, they like to wear their one, their, Air, their, their uptowns every day, all day, every day, all day. And, like, in a month, they look like they've been, you know what I'm saying, through medieval times. Um, yeah. It's been countless situations. I've seen little girls and like come come in there and they just want a new pair. And you see their old pair on their feet. You know like, what the fuck happened? And it's like how long did you even have those? They'd be like fucking like a couple months. And he's like, damn, that um, a couple months? Well, yeah. you know what? They treat them like Converse, dude. They treat them like Chuck Seventies. That shit's that shit's gross. That shit is so gross. But uptowns have made have made a pretty big resurgence. Like. Excuse me, with their recent colorways and stuff that they've been doing, especially a lot of the colorways they dropped prior to um, the whole pandemic. Um, yeah. I think it's going to just keep going up. Trab doing uptowns was like a whole thing, and I feel like I feel like at some point more designers are going to just follow suit, and it's going to be like more more like special uptowns coming out. Like we had the clots that came out. Mm-hmm. Um, it was those other ones that were like black with the really big white laces. Oh, the Korean ones. The Korean John Jay and all the Korean oh, yeah. ones, they wear them shit mm. reverse. Like, they tie it from the bottom up. It's, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's we, we, <laughs> we, saw, we saw Cactus uh, cactus Plant do uh, Air Force One. We, we've seen John Elliott do Air Force Ones. You know, we've, they definitely, there are, there are some, a lot of collabs uh, that people have done with, uh, obviously, with Air Force Ones. And you have to remember, I mean, 20 years ago, I mean, everyone wore an Air Force One. I mean, Nelly, you know, those guys singing about, Air, uh, you know, Air Force Ones is like, you know, we, they were fucking huge at one point. So, yeah, uh, we don't know what's next, but. Um, I kind of yeah. hypoth- hypothesized at one point that I thought trail running was going to be a big thing. And I was giving a lot of credit to Sakai. We talked about this on a previous episode, but like those waffles were yeah. actually a trail runner when they came out. And I know a lot of people don't know that, but I think the industry did, and they saw the popular uh, effect that those had. I mean, Lawrence, you, you big those up big time when they came out, you know what I mean? Those were one of your favorite shoes when they dropped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of these shoes that I'm seeing are, like, even the Solomons and stuff, like, those are selling. These are part of those, like, booms that I think that are happening during this uh, pandemic where people are buying that stuff and then going hiking. Maybe that has something to do with it. And then like all four did the uh tarot tigers and shit so yeah yeah, yeah that oh, was yeah. another one. yeah it's kind of around the same time as the uh sakai's too it's just interesting to see now they're going from um these big bulky dad shoes to like these thinner like spikier runners i feel like uh sakai waffles were such a clout shoe though like cats who caught them they were like yeah look at my feet dog <laughs> Oh, yeah, we see. We know. We know. Yeah. Well, those it's because those shoes checked all the hype boxes. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like when the, when all the boxes are checked, I mean, it doesn't matter how good the shoe is or how respectable the shoe is supposed to be. It's just going to go down a little bit, you know? Yeah. If you look at like the the white pair and the black pair, they're only like two $300 now because they're not like the super flashy ones. You're talking about, this, you're talking about this, the ones that released a couple months ago. Yeah. Well, the, so the, the the nylon uh, ish ones, the ones, yeah, the ones that weren't the mesh. Yeah. Well, I think those were. I think those were poorly executed, and I also feel like uh, they weren't as nice as the original five that were released. So I think you know, obviously, they weren't. Y'all you know, lost. Which shoe are we talking about? 
the Sakai waffle. Okay, okay, my fault. I, I didn't know we were, we were still talking about mine. It, we, oh, it I got yeah, the mess with the the ones that just came out. Yeah, those weren't those, those didn't sell too hot. They're they're very low on uh, resale sites. Yeah, these are the attainable versions. Yeah, they're not bad. It, it, not bad for attainable versions. No, you didn't like them. I I did. I I like the white version more than the uh, the black version. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. I mean, I didn't copy either. But I I peeped. I thought they were cool. I thought I thought it was a. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I have real, no real opinion on that shoe. Yeah, it's just kind of off your radar. Well, and I mean, cool. that's and that's kind of how they ended up where they are because people saw them and like they're not as good as the other ones. They're kind of like the walk in version, I guess you could call it, where you can just walk yeah. in on the shelf and buy it. So yeah, no one really had an opinion on it because they they already made a better one. Mm-hmm. What's up with those oh, no. uh, Sakai uh, The runners The fucking They have three colors One's a maroon Those are white Are you uh, talking about The crazy over branded Swoosh ones Yeah the... They were slated for a, a release later this year Supposedly mm-hmm. Yeah um, I'm sure I'm sure They were They're probably Supposed to release But I mean With the pandemic I mean It seems like a lot of things Are either getting pushed back or, you know, it's not, you know, it's not receiving the hype that it's supposed to receive right now. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like one of the colors. I, I think the maroon color was pretty chill. I didn't like the black and white version, but uh, we got it. We'll see, you know. Yeah, those guys. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I maroon? like this. It's kind of interesting, colors. but I just, I don't know. I hope it's I hope it's it's really held together right. Cause like when Nike did the uh the Zoom Turbo 2, uh, it's a running shoe and it's like two different soles, like that shit starts to split after a while. So like stack soles like that, like on that on that Sakai Zoom, it's kinda like that mm-hmm. vapor fly. It yeah. makes me feel kind of sketchy, but I mean like it looks interesting. If somehow somebody was like, Yo, Jews here, I'm like, all right. <laughs> but I don't think mm-hmm. I'd have just tossed him out of like a a, a, a truck. Yeah, like yo, Jews, twelve. There you I'm go. Here. Yo, good luck. <laughs> now, um, you know we we do this podcast on Sundays, uh, mm-hmm. which is uh, you know, which is for the last couple of weeks has been the Chicago Bulls Last Dance, yes. uh, Doc. And uh, obviously, we're recording. Uh, we're about an hour and fifteen minutes away from episodes uh, five and six. Uh, we talked about episodes one and two last week, Chris, myself, and uh, Isaiah. Uh, three and four, uh, what do you guys think? Because they were both excellent episodes so far. I said it before. I'll say it again. I don't trust Isaiah Thomas. He gives me weird <laughs> eyes. I don't like him. He got weird eyes. He, he got, got weird eyes. I don't like him. He won't he shake won't. Michael Jordan's hand. Shake the man's hand. All right? He just talks too smooth when it's too much pressure. Like Exactly. He's just like this, man. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> no, no, you fucking nah. weirdo. Yeah, word. Well, I think it's interesting about Isaiah is I feel like uh, he, he did what he did. <laughs> and he kind of, he's like not backtracking, but he's still coming up with excuses. And it's almost 30 years later. <laughs> yeah. Whereas when you talk to like, like <laughs> that's just what you did back then. <laughs> yeah, it's you know he used the the Celtics from '86. I mean from I'm sorry, not '86, but '88 uh, when they yeah. lost to the Pistons, and uh, you know, uh, and and he like we have a guy like Bill Lambeer, his teammate, who's just like fuck it, we ain't like them, they ain't like us, fuck it, we never like them, they we ain't they ain't never gonna like us, like that's it. Yeah. So. You, but you look at Isaiah, he, he was the guy who was the ringleader of the team. He was the best player on the team. Yeah. He was the guy who lost out on playing on the dream I mean, team. Joe he Dumars was, was, was a beast. And I feel like Joe Dumars did not get the uh, the recognition I feel like he deserved. Because Joe Dumars is busting ass. Joe, Joe D was, was amazing. The only thing about him to me was he wasn't, like, you know how they, like, he was part of the bad boys, but he wasn't a bad boy. Like, he was winning community awards, you know, and for the Pistons. Like, he was, like, the guy who was, like, the nice guy of the Pistons. Granted, they were all fucking, they're one team, but Joe D won a finals MVP. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, when you talk about the Pistons, it usually goes Isaiah, Lambert, Rodman, and then you talk about how good Joe D was. But he was fucking solid. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I feel it. 
Yeah, I just want to admit again that, uh, like, because I was so outside of basketball uh, and, and so young, I didn't know that Rodman played for the Pistons. I didn't know he had two extra rings because of that shit. I didn't know any of those crazy Pistons stories. Like, I mean, okay. me, and, me and Lawrence were lucky enough to go on television and talk about how uh, the fucking basketball back in the day was so vicious. But I didn't realize it was that vicious to that level at that time. That shit blew my mind. All that yeah. shit's crazy to me. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to five and six. I mean, the Phil Jackson stuff from these episodes were really cool to watch. I didn't know some of that stuff. Like, yeah. wait, can you guys clarify one thing for me? What's up? Sure. So the, who was the coach before Phil? I forget his name. Dan? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Doug, Collins. Doug, Doug Collins. Doug, Doug. Okay, yeah. So what happened there? Because they kind of alluded that oh, yeah, Doug, Doug wasn't happy. And yeah, so he kind of like... Down. Yeah, do you guys know anything about that? Because that was confusing to me. I think they must have so, him out of the position. So basically what happened was, I guess, they um, – Doug, he came up – he was, back in the day, very insecure about, you know, he would work the players a little harder. And he – and basically, they wanted him to install the triangle offense. That's the yeah. offense that they yeah, ran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that from the doc, yeah. So uh, Tex Winter is like this basketball genius who fucking helped fill with L.A. and Chicago – and Tex was like, you know, he knew his shit. And Doug kind of, like, tried to push Tex aside because he didn't want to run the offense through, like, the triangle offense. His, his, his offense was give the ball to Mike and get the fuck out of the way. And let Mike Literally, that's what he said in the conference. Mm -hmm. Mike was averaging, like, 38 a game. And, you know, it's rare in the NBA for a coach to get his team to the Eastern Conference, to the conference – finals and then get fired like it that's very rare and it, there's there was a lot of you know internal shit that, that was, was going cleveland, on between right? say that again that was against cleveland right so that was they beat yeah. cleveland then they beat the knicks and they lost to the pistons and the the conference finals that yeah. year they lost they lost four uh four to two so mm -hmm. when you see a team when you see a team like that in like 89 you're like oh man all right they got over cleveland they beat the knicks they fucking you know, they they took the 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 Pistons, who were the team, to six games. You're like, all right, they come back strong next year, and it's like, nah, the coach just lost his job because mm -hmm. the way Jerry Krause, like the GM, looked at the franchise, he was like, nah, like you know, I want we want to install this. We you know we, we knew we couldn't get to the next level with the coach we had. It's very rare. You don't see that very often in the NBA. Like a coach is gonna get a shot to at least you know, get over the hump and, uh, and, and Doug, but it's so interesting with, with Doug Collins and you know, that um, Doug had Mike, you see the way he talks about Mike, like, in, like, he's like, Oh, when I coach Mike, I love Mike. He's so great. Like Man, when Jordan very giddy, came, bro. Like, like an yeah. like ex that got away. When, when uh, <laughs> Jordan came back to the wizards and, uh, and what, 2001 to 2003, yeah. uh, he got Doug Collins to coach the wizards. So Doug coached yeah. him his final two years in Washington because I think Jordan it, it there's a thing man it's like god damn like I fucked with you and but it took you to get fired for us to get to that next level or maybe we would have won with you but who knows yeah. and I think you know it, it was uh, very interesting with Doug Doug was you know he's a high every every uh team he coached it kind of he kind of flamed out like he got other coaches Pictures out there flamed after. out Sixers, well, he, he was older, and this was like 2011, 2010, or some shit like that. Yeah. He's coaching these young kids, but he just, he flames out. He's like, I'm burnt out. I'm this. I'm stressed out. Yeah. Washington, he got fired. Like, it's it, it's a thing with Doug Collins, yeah, you man. know? Something's yeah. going on. Just so seeing I, all the old Rodman shit, though, that, that was interesting. I was a little lost there because when they were asking Doug about it, he was kind of like, oh, you know, it's just blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, you sure? And he's like, yeah, blah. So yeah. that was just weird. Like all <laughs> you don't know. want to talk about it? <laughs> no, it's just bad. Nah. You know? Nah. Bunch of that. <laughs> Enough of that. So we, we're, we're watching a documentary, and we're just – everyone's seeing all these fucking Jordans that are just, you know, that are nostalgia, like, you know, pieces that, you know, people missed out on. And now, mm -hmm. because of this documentary, and we talked about this before, Sneakers are fuck like these Jordans are are increasing, man. You, if you want a pair now, it's like you better get them, and you're gonna pay a lot of fucking money. Yeah. Um, what are you guys like? What are you feeling about that shit? Like, you know, are you feeling like, damn, like 
go, this is your fault, or, you know, what do we, how do we so- solve this problem? I mean, with, with the state of the economy now and what sneakers, like the sneaker economy and what that shit's looking like, I feel like paying resale for some of your favorites is just a, bu- you just got to bite that bullet sometimes. There's certain pairs I want that I missed out on for whatever reasons in my life, and I'm willing to pay up on certain shoes just because they mean something to me. And it's like, yeah. you yeah. know, like, all right, not to get too deep, but to be a little shallow, you know, a lot of this shit we do in life don't really matter. The world's gonna, we're, we're, we're just riding, we're just riding on this planet. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if you can put yourself in a position where you can live, live your best and not put yourself in a fucking hole, do what you can. I feel like the sneaker culture is kind of fucked thanks to like just social media and just how the internet is just evolving in the Skynet. Um, to be honest, I don't know. I don't think there's much we can do, but just like kind of like see where things go and see if things fizzle out and maybe like, you know, the true core of certain subcultures can take over again and maybe like, you know, like the Phoenix rise from the ash. <laughs> well, I you know, um, no, you can go, Luke. No, I just, I believe, I, I agree with them. I think there's, uh, I think this is, I, I've said it before that this is like a very delicate time in the economy of streetwear, but I think there's going to be like a lot like even like the major releases that we've seen so far, the triple black. Uh, I mean, I think the triple blacks are the only like major major release. Fog. We've seen, you know, uh, the fog. yeah, the fogs. As as far as like that went, that's like a reflection of like the market right now. They're only at like five, six hundred. Like they're only like a hundred, two hundred dollars over retail. Yeah. I think it. They'll kind of everything will kind of retain. I don't think it's gonna get too too steep for a while. I don't think. You know, I I, I kind of disagree with you in a sense, Luke, because okay. I feel like that. Uh, I feel like, especially like when you're saying with fear of guys, like they're only a hundred dollars more. I, I think the every pretty much fear of guys, except for the originals, are were pretty stagnant in terms of like like oatmeal's were going for damn near retail when they right. came out. You know, like triple black. Like, like say again. Them shits was running for like four something. Yeah, that's so what I'm saying. Like it, four something. Oh, dude. That's what I'm saying. So you look at like, especially something like a fear of God. Like when you talk about a sneaker that already retails at three hundred and fifty dollars. That's true. And and you're saying and you're putting it in a reseller who may not have a lot of money to you know to hold sneakers for 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 months or maybe a year. Like something like that is gonna like you know someone's gonna say all right, well I'll give you six hundred or and then you know after fees they didn't made what one hundred and fifty dollars or you right. know it's it. I, I, something like that is like, I, I just like I think they're those. But when you look at like a as a dunk, mm-hmm. like that, there's a bigger profit margin to be made. Shit skyrockets, bro. We've talked about like right. and we're and like how you got like uh, fucking strange loves or Kentuckys or Syracuse. Yeah, we've been watching those. <laughs> are just booming. Yeah, I don't think even know what strange love is. Yeah, <laughs> don't even know the shot. They don't even know the fucking team or anything about what strange love is. I just hate what cult like what a lot of our cultures have like blown up into. Sorry to cut you off, Lawrence. My bad. No, no, no. You good? You good, Juice? I'm just like. Well, well, you know what, man? It's like it's kind of because I'm with you, but it also goes back to what you were saying before. Like you got to do what you got to do because we have these moments with these sneakers, not us specifically, but like old the older generation of sneakerheads like us, where we like had moments with these. We put that feeling into these kids that don't know what it is because we give mm-hmm. them the hype and they just follow. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's sort of like our fault when it happens. Like they don't know shit, but they see us get excited. And then like when we get excited, that's when everybody gets excited. It's true. Social media really like boosted their fucking education as far as uh, shoes and how to cop. And then everything got a lot easier. Like there's no... Waiting online is almost not a thing anymore. Like at this no. point, so like, no. like, like that shit's pretty much dying, and it's like you just take an L and that's it. Like, yeah, what's a release day look like at Nike? All right, it's mostly re- it's all resellers. Like, right. like heavy release day, it's just resellers looping. It's just a bunch of loops, and then um, whatever uh, customers can get theirs in amidst the line. Right. Ah, but that shit's hard. Yeah. And I watch that shit. I like. I've I've been on too many launches where I just be watching like damn, mm-hmm. yeah. Because for us it's just like it's just it's bread in our pockets. It's not like we don't as much as like 
it's so many people of sneaker culture that work together in Nike. It's a lot of people that's like you got to do what the big, what what, what, what the higher ups say. So yeah, we move them shits out, and it's like I guess manager's discretion as well. So it's like shit be mm-hmm. fine, bro. But it's like it's you know what. It also goes back to what you were saying. I don't know if you said this um, when the botched recording happened or whatever, but you were saying you only wear Jordans that he wore, right? Only wear, yeah. Yeah. Even outside of, like, Michael Jordan, like, I only wear Jordans that he wore that I like. And then on top of that, like, even, like, regular sneakers, uh, Air Max 90s, I only like the infrareds. Uh, like, a lot, I only like the, the first color that dropped is mm-hmm. my favorite color. Just right, OG, OG colors are always the staple. It has mm-hmm. the, it has it has a color palette that cannot be mimicked. You can yeah. do colorways that are kind of like it. Then you'll do like a like let's say like your favorite is the breads, bread ones, and then they do like bread toes and all these other different shoes. And it's like you know something close to it, but it's not that. Yeah, it's like all the other colors that drop and all the stuff. It's like it's like whatever. Like you gotta really grab me, but I only really wear the like. Like if Mike wore it, I'm 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 pretty much fucked for it. Like my favorite pair of sixes is the maroon sixes. When those mm-hmm. shits when those shits re retroed, I was like, ah! <laughs> yo, I and luckily I had a Nike plug at the time when those shits dropped and I paid like a buck forty three, nigga. I came up. Nice. Cause those Very shits nice. was like two something. So I got the dizzy. See, but like the kids now buying, they don't they don't have those moments. So it really is us instilling it into that because like the ones that Mike wore are always the most expensive. Because not yeah. only are we getting it, the kids with the bots are getting it, too. Yo, but a lot of these kids that are resellers, a lot of them just get startup money from their parents. Yeah. A lot oh, of these, yeah. It's not, like, it's not like some, like, Hollywood story, like, oh, you know, man, I, I fucking had to sell crack for, or whatever. Like, they got to do <laughs> <some> crazy shit <laughs> to fucking get his bank up to then yeah. start flipping these kicks. Like, oh, I took the money from my fucking baby moms because she's like, she'll hold me. Nah, it's it these fourteen year old kids that get they like their parents who don't really give a shit. They're like right, who have disposable like income, who can exactly. hold on to shit for a long time. I yeah. had a kid. I had a kid sit when I used to work with Jason Mark. I had a kid sit in my chair, and he's like, "Yeah, he had like seventeen pairs of whatever Yeezy that dropped at the time." Yeah, I was trying to figure out figure out the flip. I'm like, this nigga's like seventeen. I was like, yeah. Oh, he, no cap. He he was between fifteen and seventeen. Yeah, and I was just like, damn, like. I was like, it made me think about me at 15, 17. I was like, fuck, I sucked. And no, it was like, just a different like, culture back then. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Whole different culture. But like yeah. these kids are like they their parents hold them down. It's like that shit's crazy. Yeah. That shit's I, I know. crazy. Oh. Uh, when, I was gonna when, say I oh go, go ahead. All right, when Juice when Juice was working uh, <laughs> uh when Juice was working for Jason Marks, uh he would always like ask these kids in like they're off white like Prestos or whatever, and be like, oh, is that your first pair of Prestos? That used to make me laugh all the time. <laughs> That's a good man right. like that. <laughs> he used to walk up to these kids and be like, is that your first pair? It's your first pair like, of They'd be like, yeah. Be like, yeah, man. And he's, he's just like, son of a bitch. <laughs> kids it's don't that, fucking know. That, no, every, all, every off-white shoe is like, you, okay, people, our sneaker culture is not about having these gems, these trophies, and loving it, wearing it, and getting it right. A yeah. lot of these niggas are flexing. A lot of it is like, mm-hmm. yo, let me throw these on. Kind of, yeah. Everyone's going to look at me, and everybody's going to think I'm a certain way because I have these of shoes course. on. A lot, of these, yeah. a lot of these people, especially foreigners who don't, for somehow, and what's... You can maybe, say the Chinese. Maybe I'm, <laughs> <laughs> it's the maybe Chinese, I'm tweaking. Dude. Maybe I'm tweaking. But outside of America? Yeah. Niggas can't really dress, and they dress like mannequins. And it's like, it's not them in the outfit; it's the outfit on them. You yeah. Know? How many right. times have you seen a video of just a guy in off-white shirt, off-white pants, off-white shoe, like the whole the bag? The yeah, whole, the bag. Like, He's seen the whole ensemble he so drive many a times. Fucking Toyota fucking Caravan, like this shit is yeah. crazy. It's in, it's it's insane. You drive a Dodge Caravan, and you're like. You're, you're tweaking like you're you, you're dressing like first of all you're dressing like thirty years younger than yourself somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, also, it's just I don't know. It's like, but I did have this one Chinese girl sit in my chair and she was like, "Yo, honestly, it's a status thing." Like a lot yeah. of these like Koreans and Chinese people like mm-hmm. wear absolutely because it's like so like remember how like 
uh, smoking cigarettes was like it's considered a certain you know yeah you, you can oh, you're get, oh you getting a bag you smoke cigarettes oh you getting a bag like yeah. that that right. so that transferred over into like fashion so mm-hmm. I mean I get it but it's still hilarious so you get like these dudes and like just dressing like the, the like a, literally like a mannequin you have like Balenciagas with like oh with like some Tom Brown pants it's like, but it's like really tacky <clears throat> yeah, yeah for sure but it's pretty hilarious and pretty sad. Lawrence, yeah, you were about just, to go somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was, you know, I was intrigued because, like you say, you work, you work at a Nike store, and, and obviously, a lot of the times, a hype release comes out. It's through the app. You know, you 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 uh, reserve your pair. But I was just reading an article in Georgia about uh, in in Green Briar Mall where you know they've uh, they've eased uh, the restrictions uh, and, and out there, and people were lined up yesterday for the Fire Red Fives. And um, it just makes me think, like, you know, people are willing to risk their lives for sneaking. And this is nothing new. Mm-hmm. I mean, but it's it's really disgusting to me. Like, where when I see people, like, you know, a, you know, you have all you, these COVID cases going on in this world, and people are still just lining up at Jimmy Jazz's and malls, and God, you know, and uh, it just makes you realize, like. What what are we like? What are people trying to get like to be like the freshest? Like, are you willing to die for it? Yeah, it's not worth it. It's I I don't I don't really get it. It has to be some sort of acceptance thing because like the I I can't I can't speak for all four of us, but I'm pretty sure I can speak for Luke and and Lawrence. Where it's just like we just buy what we like because we're and we're fashionable people with taste. And these people that don't have it, I think like yeah. that need for acceptance is just driving them. Because a lot of these dudes, like, going back to even the point we were just making about, like, the they didn't watch Mike, but they have the Mike shoes. It's like, they just need to be feeling a part of something. You know what I mean? It's like the same thing when Apple first started really getting crazy with that stuff. Like, back to the status thing. I think it's all coming from the same place. Where Mm -hmm. I guess these kids would rather have um, fucking coronavirus than not flex in their fire fives. I mean, yeah, this is a thing, man, where people, obviously, they're not taking the social distancing thing serious, especially, you know, if your people yeah. willing to wait for for some Jordans, like, God damn, man, you know, I, I think this is this is what we're seeing, though. This is like the the people got, they're getting their fucking, their money, they're getting their stimulus, they're getting yeah, man. $600 from CARES, like, they, you know, now it's like, you know, uh, we're gonna fucking spend this money, and that's why a lot of these states are reopening because they're like, we got to get this money, this this twelve hundred dollars yeah. somehow, some way. Um, we talked about the last dance. We talked about uh, you know, stimulus. Uh, we talked about the dunks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nike teased uh, three new dunks that are coming out in the next uh, month or so. Mm-hmm, the right. lows got lows. You guys feeling them? Uh yeah, I like them a lot. I would uh I like certain colorways. I mean, I, I guess I, I guess you can say technically, if you like one, you like them all. It just depends on the color. Mm-hmm. Um, the colors are sick though. Hold on, let me pull it up. I just me. need the highs, man. I can't do lows. I look so weird in lows. Nike does not mm-hmm. respect my feet enough for me. Lows are tricky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are, man. And it's like you know what it is, man. Too, it's like I I have a sample size. I have a size nine. So, like, with my 5'10 height, I look wild when I wear, like, shoes that are, like, appropriate to my th- – I need my feet to look like they got stung by a bunch of bees. You know what I mean? Like, my shoes need to be bulky. I wear a size 12. I'm just going to be looking like long Jeffies on my fucking – Oh, yeah, dude. You a clown out here running around. I'm a 12 as well, so, I mean, you know. You got to wear cargo pants all day with them forever. Yeah. Only pair of pants that looks good with them. These are made for my shit. people. Also, thank God that baggy shit came back. As an into style, bro. I needed that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've been getting that. shit on them for the past fifteen years, and finally, I'm ahead of the forefront. Right? You feel me? Hilarious. Funny enough, like as a skater, like I missed the early two thousands, so like I didn't get to be a part of that baggy culture. And then like that shit made a comeback. And then no funny shit. The uh, sales company that I represent, I work with, we represent uh, DC skateboarding. So like, mm-hmm. I get shoes and shit. So like, I'm back on my like. You know what I'm saying? Baggy mm-hmm. jeans, baggy sweats. I'm out here skating. That shit, that shit, that shit was beautiful. But now Corona, and now I'm kind of like fuck. So I'm home with it, playing skate three. <laughs> Sidebar: Did y'all hear about? Um, they said that, like I read that 
this is between like March 27th and April se- or like or April 27th to May 7th. Like these are like the biggest. This is like the the highest incubation time for like COVID at the moment or some shit like that. And like it's, it's like hitting its peak. Like, yeah, it's like wise just to stay in type shit and not really be around people. Yeah, man. I, I, read, would... I read it on like something off Twitter off somebody's saying that the, their, their parents like got a message from like UC Davis. They work for like UC Davis and shit like that. And they were talking about how like those points were like like between those two time periods is like precious. Stay inside. Yeah. I mean, there's rumors of the second wave that are supposed to come, like, when we go back out. I mean, I don't really know who to listen to or who what. I'm just going to keep my mask on and keep it moving. That's it. As long as we ever stay six away with a mask on, I feel like everyone's going to be all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you didn't talk about your mask yet. How? Oh. Oh, fuck. Right. Get it. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, the some of the listeners know, but I work, uh, I consult for this company called So Hoodie, and it's just it's a portable hood, basically. You can put it on anything, and this is not attached to my fucking shit at all. Um, but I added a gator to it. So now it's good for like biking or if you're a runner or some shit. I look like I'm about to rob a bank. Every time I go into a bodega and they don't know me, they act a little weird. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, so I mean, this was my shit. I've been making a bunch of masks for a bunch of people. I can't wait for the other shit to come out and show you guys. But yeah, this was one of them. I was riding around on a city bike in Fort Greene by where... Uh, Juice lives. Fucking, it's New Orleans out there. Everyone's just drinking on the street. It's fine. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, no, we're fine. We're not dying. I'm just like, (laughs) I'm telling you, T-Virus, bro. Just be ready for the T-Virus. Get your weapons up and let's just be ready, son. Get your green herbs and red herbs. Put them together. Let's get some fucking... (laughs) (laughs) Because this shit is like... No one gets it. And then yeah. Washington Square Park, Huntington Beach was bussing. Yeah. Uh, it's mad places bussing. I'm just like, you guys are dickheads. But it's yeah. cool. And, I, and I was, I've been saying this to a lot of people. I've been like, yo, I wonder what the world's going to look like when it starts getting hot out. Like, but like, when I say the world, obviously, I mean New York. Because like, yeah. we're, we're a different kind of world. And yeah. when, it gets hot out, when it starts really becoming summer, summer, yeah, people are just going to start turning into zombies, bro. I'm going to start shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. My roommates were talking about getting guns and shit too. I just everybody needs to calm down, stay six feet away, keep your mask on, and don't go out if you don't have to. That's it. Let's just get through this shit, you know. Uh, do you got time for any more topics? Yeah, I think we could do a couple more. I I don't even I didn't even pay attention to when I restarted this shit. So we been restarted at like seven thirty. Oh, did I? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we got. Yeah, we got like one or two more. I'm here. We uh. Uh, Go ahead. I was gonna, I was gonna say we uh we talked about well you know obviously with episodes five and six of the Last Dance tonight, uh Kobe Bryant's gonna be featured in one of those. Yep. Uh mm-hmm. And uh, we, we there's uh, news that Nike's gonna be uh, uh releasing one of his uh, pro show version of uh, the Kobe sixes. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, I'm a big fan. I like the six, seven, eights, even though they all look very similar uh, in terms of playing basketball. I love the sixes. I love the eights. Um, you know, obviously, the, I, I don't know the, if there's a, a right way for Nike to release these without, you know, resellers trying to get their hands or either they have to flood the market or what's the, what's the option that you guys think Nike can do? Yeah, I mean, like you said, flooding the market's a smart one. So that way no one can really profit off this dude's death. Uh, I think exactly what they did with the fives, you know, have two different release dates for it. Well, not you know? two yeah. release date, like a shock drop. You saying like a shock yeah, drop? Yeah, like do a shock date. drop and then a release date. But I like, just like restock opportunities. You know what I mean? Just like yeah. make it av- make it available uh, easy. I mean, I don't know how many pairs they are making for these, but yeah, just make it so it's not like make it so I don't gotta like pr- like choose a Kobe shoe over like the off white five for my my stimulus check spend. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's also true. Yo, if any of the poison dart frogs come out, I'll cop. But other than that, I'm not really, like, busting my ass for a pair of Kobe's. I never tripped about Kobe's before. I'm not going to trip now. Yeah, Same that's kind of – that's the that's the right way to do it. Like, I, I wasn't – I loved the Kobe shoes, but they weren't from, from my aesthetic, and I never bought any. I mean, like, mm-hmm. Adidas Kobe's, hopefully they don't try to do shit with that because that – I mean, that should be left alone. But, like, if that's Toasters came back out, I mean, I'd be all over Toasters. But, like, yeah, everyone just got to kind of chill. And it's so weird. I, I don't, like – for an extra dollar, they'll just step over this dude's grave. It's wild. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's gross. We're really uh, this COVID shit's really making us like really showing the people like what our government like can and cannot handle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, this whole thing, our government's not set up to be stopped like this. So it's like everybody's like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Gotta buy something. And you know, Kobe, I guess it's been confirmed by a couple people, but he was doing his own doc before he uh, unfortunately passed. He's gonna yeah. have his own last dance coming up, so that's gonna, gonna be cool to see too. That'd, That'd be, be fun. Th- it's, that's just not weird to say. Like, damn, Kobe's dead. Yeah, it blows what? my mind still. What the fuck? What do you, yo? If anybody came from the past to the our present and said, yo, what the fuck is going on? Yo, Kobe's dead. They'd be like, holy shit! Yeah, I just yeah, I know. Two thousand one. No. Yeah, like that. That shit is crazy. What so happened? He like jumped too hard. Nah, it was just something. It was an accident. It's like, oh, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, you know, yeah. that shit. One of the most shocking deaths, I think. Uh, celebrities. No one saw uh, that coming. No one. I, I was a left hook to my fucking balls, yo. No mm-hmm. cap. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, so. M M&M and fours are in the. Uh, Nobody cares this. about those. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He, well, my people care because, about the force. I was gonna say I, anything the, the eminent. Wife. My people care about. Okay, he's one of our. He's one of our Jesuses out here. Okay, we only had a couple of versions of him. <laughs> you know, I threw a ticket at those. I went on StockX the second I saw Eminem fours were on there. I was like, I will throw ten dollars for a ticket at that. You know, people gonna, were popping the uh, winter fours because they look like the M&Ms. Yeah, like, he was saying it when it first came out that they look like that, the Eminem fours. That's exactly what I said. The that winter, exactly the winter what fours were stupid because it was like a, a line, like a fleece line collar and shit. Like it's like that's some hot sneakers. You're gonna only wear those when it's cold. It's like mm-hmm. yeah. you to Russia. Don't don't sell them to niggas out here. <laughs> that's a that's a three month shoe. Nah, you can't have that. Well, it's interesting you- that you know StockX is doing this now because they they have a lot. There's a lot of things going on with them that they've been in the news for employees testing positive for COVID, uh, processing fees increasing. Yeah, they're in danger right now. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like just the, the fact that, you know, they provide such a basic service for people, uh, I think they're never going to go out, but I think there will be some changes probably to upper management eventually. It, it, it's too easy for like you to purchase something off the stock X, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. like without, you, you know, you can literally just say, all right, I want to buy this. Or I want to put it in a bid and it's like, all right. And I don't think that anyone will ever, um, I don't think, I don't think it's going to go out of business. No, they won't. I mean, yeah, like you said, things will change. Maybe the business will uh, change as far as, like, what kinds of shoes can go on there. Like, if it's only the hype shit. Like, because you go on there now, there's some shoes you can get for, like, under half the original retail. And they're not bad shoes. Yeah. And that they're wasting money on those types of orders. Like, that the manpower to move, like, some general release shit, like, just some regular Air Max shit for 60 bucks. it's, like, not worth the salaries or however they do it. So, it, they'll probably change the model to more just hype shit. No, why would they do that? I mean, that if there's if there's a processing fee, if they can make money off of a, a fucking fee, they're gonna do that. You understand what I'm saying? That's part of the reason. Yeah, why but I feel like they, no, I understand what you're saying, but those shoes are moving like they were before. Like even at this low of a price, like I don't see a lot of that stuff moving. Well, which is interesting because I feel like Flight Club had a similar model in terms of not taking certain shoes, but then also they they dealt with a physical inventory. Yeah. Like, where their their stuff was in a fucking basement. Like, whereas StockX is like, the person holds this, the fucking shoes. I mean, I don't know, man. It's just like, if you have... I, it's also like bandwidth. It's also maybe stuff that me don't understand, but I just can't imagine all the... Because they do still have to, like, manage that inventory, whether it's physical or in a spreadsheet. And someone mm-hmm. has to be in charge of that. And if they're cutting costs, and even if it's just a couple people, it's like, maybe they got to cut the kind of shoes that they do. Or the handle. Well, I think I, I, I mean maybe not shoes, but then maybe they don't fucking have a Rolex section or fucking. You yeah, know, that's another thing section. too. Maybe yeah. just keep it more like what. Cause, yeah, I've never heard of anyone buying a Rolex off StockX, so that that kind of makes more sense than maybe cutting some of the shoes. If you buy, I bought, I bought some socks off StockX. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's even more at least foot related. You know what I mean? Like you sell socks to people that are buying shoes in the store. You know what I mean? That's part of the hookup training. Like you try to get the build the sale or whatever. You never go like, yo, get these Air Maxes and this Rolex. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, if you're going to StockX for your Rolex, you better, you better pray to the authentic, authenticity gods. Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh, that's true. Do they like call in someone from Rolex to like do a double check? Cause it's no. like, I'm not letting Zach from fucking Massachusetts. Yeah. 
You're like, oh no, nah, this Rolex is real, dude, for sure. Here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like the, it's those dudes in Chinatown that like make you do the the hit so you can hear the shit move in the middle of it, whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, dude, saw so, like no, it's it's for sure good. Oh no, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. It's good. Yeah, no, dude, your Rolex is so is so good, dude. The Rolex, dude, for sure. No worries, bro. <laughs> Cheers. So Cheers. No worries, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, you know what we could probably end off of is uh, the NCAA letting kids get endorsements now. Yes. That's gnarly. It's pretty crazy. So it's like, from what I understand from the article, it's two set, like it's an individual contract as opposed to the school contract, mm -hmm. right? Where it's yeah. like, you know, like maybe like they use Duke as an example because Duke is like heavily sponsored by Nike. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. And then they go, okay, well – we could put this player in Adidas like lifestyle shit and they can make money that way. But just because like separated from like the court and like this Instagram social I was media. Say, like if you sponsor some kid, like if you like do individual like mm -hmm. sponsorships like that, like how do you know this kid's going to like be a good turnout? Like he's still a kid. Look like, at Zion, bro. If anybody put clothes on Zion. I mean, what I can people really would have bought it? What, they going to put him in, like, big and tall shit? Like, that nigga, <laughs> he can't wear, it, like... He can't cool. dress, really. I mean, what NBA player, like, it's it's but so many who can actually dress and not look hilarious. So. It's true. I was just excited because not only, like, I mean, for years, people have been talking about college kids to get sponsorships, whatever, but the the media coverage has gotten so intense that it's gotten to the point where high school kids are really being focused and not, like, in major cities like New York City. I mean, People are going to middle America to scout high school kids. Sure. So high school kids, it's now moving to the point where, like, I mean, Overtime is a great example. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the company Overtime. They're literally like a media company that covers high school kids going into college. Oh. So the yes. fact that that they're moving the bar to college kids now being able to get endorsements, mm -hmm. I think it's just a step in the right direction anyway. I mean, anyone should be able to get any endorsement deal they want. I mean, you look at, uh, I mean, the Olympics is a great example. Some of those guys are super young, and they're getting McDonald's money. And they didn't go to college. Right. So, I, I mean, personally, I was just happy to see that happen. Um, the younger I, it goes – well, no, go, Lawrence. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Finish. No, I was just saying the younger it goes, like, as far as media coverage, uh, you, you can't wait till the kid's, like, 25 to, to get a contract somewhere on something other than what they're doing. Yeah. So, I, I, think, I think what happens here is the, the NCAA started seeing that there was ways around – eligibility like you can go overseas or the the nba is now creating a a g league team that is comprised of blue chip high school kids who are you know should be freshmen in college so i think the ncaa realized that man fuck like we're in trouble yeah. and for something that they stood firm on for so long for them to bend the rules the moment one of the top prospects decides to go to uh, play in the NBA G League, it's I mean NCAA is the biggest pimps in the world. We've all we've all I think expressed this at some point at another time. It also depends to me though. And here's the thing I, I'm gonna say: some of these kids are you gonna get more notoriety and more uh, clout? Not clout, but like you go to the G League and play on a G League team in the NBA or, or developmental league, or go to Duke where you're gonna be fucking on ESPN every fucking week playing in a fucking system. If, you know, if there's an NCAA tournament, you become. So I think, you know, I, I, I mean, that's a completely different, like, like segue, but I, it's, yeah. uh, it, it, it's, it's interesting, man. Like, you no, know, it's, a good, it's like, a good point. Yeah. NCAA basketball is going to get neutralized by the NBA. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's what really, I think, pushed their fucking, it's their. Fucked, it, man. Yeah. NBA is becoming the fucking galactic empire, nigga. It's just like mm -hmm. this shit is insane. It's one of them. It's like Disney. Sure. It's like Disney running everything. The NCAA, like mm -hmm. NBA is just like, yeah. It's mm -hmm. really well, it's tough because it's like, would you rather these kids get paid? Like, because the NCAA does that now. They are the fucking empire for these kids for sure. But no one mm -hmm. paying these kids. These kids are just like getting good grades. Exactly. Like, They're super talented. Oh they get a free ride. They can't even really go to classes. Yeah, wait, yeah. they're not even getting good game braids, bro. They're, the, they're just there to help the cloud of the school win some shit. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, these kids don't even go to class at they all because they're receiving doing. receiving good grades. Yeah, yeah. They're, re yeah, they're receiving them. I don't know if they're working for them, you know, <laughs> but they're receiving good grades. 
Their uh, grade out of 100 is based on how many points they got in the season, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. You put up 89, you get a B plus, bro. <laughs> I realize that when we get old, a lot of our, like, alumni basket, like, a lot of the team, a lot of, the, like, the players are going to grow up watching us. A lot of old dudes with tattoos. I just thought about that. Yeah. It's like I can't wait know? to see J.R. Smith old. Right? <laughs> I just I just I just thought about like what the NBA used to be. Remember like seeing a dude with tattoos, like the weirdest thing you're like, oh shit, Kenya Martin. Yeah. Fucking like you'll mm-hmm. see dudes with like tattoos and like it like it was like a like a you get like a certain bad boy perspective. Not everybody got tattoos. Not everybody's just like I don't yeah. know, like it's just crazy how the NBA has changed. It just keeps changing, it keeps evolving, and now it's like really starting to like pressure out colleges. It's like what the fuck? You're starting to get <laughs> For fucking sure. what you could like, this is like the NBA is gonna have school like NBA college, and it's just gonna like that G League team. They'll get classes and then they'll like graduate and then. Careful, this might be a plot of an anime. Oh, <laughs> oh shit, that'd be sick. Hilarious. One oh, giant shit. basketball school. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think actually right here is probably a good uh. Sp- Good spot to stop. We got uh, the doc starting in a half hour. I want to go, like, settle my shit and get ready. Um, yeah. Juice, thanks for coming, bro. We appreciate you. Yeah. Um, I'd love to come back whenever it's possible. Yeah. yeah man. Oh, you're always welcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, um, where, can, where can people find you, Juice, on, on social uh, media? So on Instagram and on Twitter, uh, at let me get a L-E-M-M-E-G-E-T-U, four H's. Um... I have, like, YouTube stuff, too, but, like, I'm not really pushing that because I'm, like, I'm doing a lot of, like, reshaping, figuring a lot of stuff out. But um, all my main shit you can catch through my Instagram. And then, mm-hmm. and well, that. you also you also manage a uh, a rapper as well? So um, a lot of things have changed. Um, okay. So I still – I still <laughs> – not. Nah, I still, like, do, like – I don't know how to call it. Like, I, I, I still manage in a sense. Like, yeah. Like, uh, Heavy because I have a I'm trying to focus on my acting career and it's like kind of music manager and act, and acting career at the same time. They weren't coinciding, but That's I still good. see a lot of this shit and I still try and push uh, work to him. But uh, you can follow him at Drow the Whale. He's from Brooklyn. He's very uh, down to earth. Very I love good. Drew. Dude. He's great. Yeah. And he's fucking. His he has bars. Like it's not like mm-hmm. New York, it's not like regular New York shit. So um, awesome. he did a freestyle. Well, you guys can definitely check it out at yeah. Drew the Whale. <laughs> Let me get a all of that first, everybody. All right. Let me get a holla at your boy. Holla at him. Word. I appreciate it. Um, any guys' final words before we dip out of here, before I do, like, the final wrap-up plug shit? Uh, Juice, once again, thanks for coming, man. It's always fun hanging out with you, buddy. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, we, we were talking about, like, stupid shit we would we buy with our, uh, with our uh, stimulus money. Uh, I've been buying some shit from Tenant. Support your locals, people. That's a big thing. Support your oh, locals. Oh, yeah. Shout out Jesse and Chris. Those are our guys, former guests. We did the live pod there. Um, Al, you got anything before we dip? Nah, I just went ready for that, that episode five and six show. Yeah. Um, so at LZD325, at Trevizas, at Not That Chini, at Sub Podcast NYC, um, NY, uh, Sub Podcast NYC at Gmail. You got, if you go on the Instagram, you can text us. We got a Google Voice that you can leave us a message. Join the Discord, Juice. I'm gonna send you a link after this shit. Yeah, join um, the Discord, dude. It's popping. I'm here. For yeah, you. no, Discord. Discord's where it's at. Um, and yeah, that's it. I got this hood. I got other hoods coming out and mass shit. Uh, for you guys, I'll let you know as soon as I do them. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. All right. All right. Peace. All right. Peace, guys. You. Yeah.